Legend of Total War here with a new campaign series for Total War Attila. So the Slav culture pack came out uh, today, so it's now time to, I guess, give it a go. So, there's three factions available, Sclavenians, Etians, Venetians. Um, I've had a look at all three factions so far, and I've decided to play as the Venetians. Um, just because this, the, it really just came down to interest. Um, I'm certainly not looking for the ultimate fucking challenge again, because I've already, I've already gone through, um, you know, Western Roman Empire, this is Total War, and Eastern Roman Empire, Total War, uh, this is Total War. I would like two for ones to just play a normal campaign. So, uh, of course I'm still gonna play on Legendary Difficulty. I've just been having a look at, like, faction traits, like, this is... These guys are alright, but they're they're probably ranked too easy for what I would like. So I've gone with the sort of mid range. This one here, I think, yeah, they they would actually be quite hard because this trait here that fucking sucks uh, because they would suck in a manually resolved fight in open field fights. That's terrible. Anyway, so we're going to play as the Venetians. So this is just going to be a normal paced game, not this is Total War, not Veni Vidi Viki. I'll auto resolve where I feel needed, I'll total where I feel needed, use diplomacy where I feel needed. It's not going to be the the, you know, the ultimate challenge as well. Because the one thing is that, you know, when, when the Slavs pack was re revealed, I wasn't sitting in my seat going, yes, this is what I've been dreaming about for since it was released. You know, when someone says Slavs to me, I just think backwater horseshit. Oh, we don't need any of that stuff. So, was I excited by this campaign pack? I said no, not really, not at all. Um, that doesn't mean it, it isn't good. I guess we'll we'll see how we go in regard to it. But yeah, like I said, my excitement level for it was like that's about as excited as I got. Yeah. Um, all right. So to begin with. Um, what should we do? <laughs> we start off with two regions. Public order issues, largely because of difficulty level minus eight. If we were playing on easy, it would be plus one. Who plays on easy anyway? Um, so we need to get public order under control right away. How are we going to go about that? Let's have a look what, what buildings are available. So, communal grounds here, that provides three public order, that provides seven, that's no public order. We, c we can't afford to have any squalor because we've got no sanitation built up yet. Over here, okay, the best thing about this, uh, the, um, I keep calling them Slovenians, but Slavic factions, is this religious chain here. That actually improves fertility. That is, without a doubt, the best thing about them. But do I need it right now? Not really. We haven't invested too much in fertility, so we can worry about that a little bit later on. Certainly would be good to get some sanitation, but... They've also got wonders, but I had a look at these wonders. For one thing, they have a huge maintenance cost, and the conditions required to get them are kind of... Look, to be honest, like... Uh, what's it called? 10 heroic victories? That shouldn't be a problem. 20 heroic victories? I'm not concerned by that. 80% state religion? That's going to be difficult because state religion takes a long time to, to well, religion takes a long time to increase. Not only that, you need to basically build churches, well not churches, but shrines in every single region you own. And there's no technologies here that I could see that actually provides bonuses to state religion. <coughs> so it would be very hard to get it. Now, I kind of get that maybe it shouldn't be hard to get, but it sort of... Given the bonuses that are here, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's worth aiming for. Um, and you can only build it in the capital, which would be... Um, I can't... Don't expect me to be able to pronounce these names. I'm fucking English. I'm not a master of cultures, not a master of languages. I see something like that, and I'll just go Pel... Peltezkaja. Because that's what it looks like. And it's probably something more like... Or something like that. I don't know. I don't speak Slavic. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go with, um, you know what, I'm gonna rename it, I'm gonna rename it, I'm gonna name it, because in, in Australia, we'd call this 
Willow Goo Goo. I can't even spell that properly. So fuck it. If we're gonna have a normal campaign. We're gonna have we're gonna we're gonna have some fun here. And this settlement here, and I'm gonna call it Wimber Jumba. Can't even fucking spell it. Wimber Jumba. What the fuck? Oh no, it has it has updated. Just yeah, there we go. So we got Willow Goo Goo and Wimber Jumba. Although to be honest, those aren't actually Australian names. I totally fucking just made them up. All right, and let's see here. Let's have a look at these guys. Fearless warrior mentor. Because what we want to do is send someone up here to go and occupy that straight away. Uh, hang on. We also need to decide who's going to be the governor of this region. So this guy here, he's got zeal, so he'd make a good commander. All right. Well then. All right, then faction air, raise an army. Ready for battle. Actually, why don't you On the move, take hold of this, Percy and we'll send Rumble. him right now. Will it go good? Whatever. Who cares? And then we'll build... What's going to provide us with the most money? That provides quite a lot. Doesn't provide very much food though. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got the the farm. I guess that's cattle. It just says vanity pastures, vanity fields, or goat herds. Goat herds provide the most amount of money. Uh, not money. Um, food without fertility. They provide the most amount of food with fertility, but those provide the most amount of food with or without fertility. So I gotta, I gotta toss up now. What do I go for? Food, or money? I think money is important. Fucking hell. Um, fuck it. I'm just gonna go with that. Fuck it. Uh, yeah, just go with food. Uh, not food. Money. There's not much food in that. But we've, we've got food to begin with. Why do we have so much? Oh, because we had to start off with two farms. Yeah, it's all good. Um, we don't have much money. There's no way in hell we're going to be able to trade with anyone. Oh yeah, anti -ins. How come they like us My straight away? Be well. Nice. Good. Establish a trade agreement. It's always good to establish a trade agreement early before shit hits well, the fan. Eh? Um, let's see if we can also get a non-aggression pact with them. Nice. And what about the Slovenians? Come on, like me, bitch. The guards will have me listen to All right. Good and noble friend. I have a feeling I've gotten lucky. I don't think this would happen I normally. You, uh, I mean, speaker. on average. The f fuck, man, we're doing doing great My today. Friend, be Everybody wants to trade, even though well, we don't have any tradable friend. goods. Greetings, friend. Ah, that's okay. Well then, how much income did that increase? Holy shit balls! Oh. It yeah, it didn't increase it by heaps, but still, that's still good. Okay, so we need a governor in here. Alright, who's gonna do it? So you're good at agent recruitment. Yeah, you're good at what? Wealth generated by industry. We don't have any industry, bitch. And you're good at unit experience. None of these guys are good. Alright, have who else have we got? We got Master Planner, Merchant and Taskmaster. None of these guys are good for what we need. So, I don't know, must get the agent recruitment dude. And Edict, let's see. We've got Sacred Winds, which improve, uh, improve religious influence. Public Order, Research Rate, Unit Experience, or Growth. Definitely got to go to growth early on because in legendary campaign there's a huge amount of public order penalties that we can't negate. The, the uh, difficulty level. So what we need is buildings. And we've only got five building slots here at the moment, so we're going to need more. Let's move on. But yeah, with this campaign, basically my plan here is to sit back and relax and just build up this province here. 
um, because I don't think expanding is a good idea at this point. So, is there likely to be a battle on episode one? Probably not. There may not even be a, a battle on episode two. So if you were watching this campaign going, oh, I can't wait to see Legend get into a fight and crush them or get wrecked or whatever, um, like I said, I'm not I'm not being aggressive on this campaign. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do whatever the fuck I want. Because one thing I haven't really had a chance to do on this game is just have fun and just dick around with it. And just that kind of shit. I've always had to fucking do these monstrous goddamn challenges, which have actually made the game not fun. Like I've I've said it many times, but the Western Roman Empire campaign, um, this is Total War, was resoundingly boring as fuck. I just did not enjoy it because it was just defensive battle, defensive battle. Over and over and over. The Eastern Empire campaign was a lot more fun. The Huns was alright, but I was still learning the game how to play it. So, and even then I was I was being completely destructive with everything. It wasn't really a challenge campaign though. But those are the only three campaigns that I've done. Also, there was a patch with this. Now, if, you're, if you watch the Eastern Roman Empire, this is Total War campaign, you'll notice with, you know, the episodes coming out that none of the changes will affect that campaign. That is because the campaign has been completely recorded. That's it's finished. I've finished recording it. So I'll try I'll give you guys a bit of an insight about how I operate my video recordings. Um, I know Lionheart does things. I'll, co I'll compare it to Lionheart because he, he actually explains how he does things because he likes to take he basically records an episode, uploads it, waits for feedback before he records the second uh, the next episode. I don't do that because quite frankly I don't care about I mean whilst I do care about feedback, I don't really let it dictate to me how I'm going to play the campaign. So, um, yeah, what I do is I record episode one, for example, of any given series, and then begin uploading it. So as soon as I finish this, I'll begin uploading it. But whilst it's uploading, I'll begin episode two. Now, I think it's episode one will probably take three, four, five hours to upload. And then I'll, I'll need to build the thumbnail for it and whatever. So after, after it's finished uploading, I will have already recorded like three or four or even five episodes. So then I begin uploading episode two and then I'll just keep going. Because when I start a campaign, I prefer just to start it and just go all the way through and finish it. Because one problem that I've, I, I've had in the past is if I play a campaign like a little bit, like play it one, one day and then don't play it for a couple of days, I come back to it, I forget all the shit that I had planned. And so I'm really inefficient. And people will notice, you know, things like, oh, you're forgetting about this, or you're forgetting about that. Well, just, yeah, of course, because I've got other shit on my mind, because I, I play, like, 20 campaigns at once when doing it that way. But I found that if I could just play the campaign in a rushed, not necessarily rushed manner, but just play it non-stop until it's finished, I will forget less stuff. And thus, not seem as forgetful. Because sometimes when your empire gets big, there's a lot of things to remember to do. And like I said, guys, like more than happy to uh, receive feedback on, on anything. But if you think that it's going to dictate or any of your suggestions are actually going to be implemented, chances are probably not. I'm a bit of a stubborn dick like that. Um, I tend not to. I listen to advice. I don't necessarily um, take heed of advice. I've, it's just had, it's something the way I've grown up because I, I used to listen to people all the time and people would just lead me fucking astray. Um, with so many things in my life, so I, I just came to be extremely resistant to advice. But you know, sometimes I'll hear advice and I think, I'll actually will think, that's actually a really good idea, but it's rare. A lot of times when I hear advice, I think, ah, nah, it's crap. I prefer to make my own mistakes in life. I've found that it's, it's just the best way to learn, is just to make your own mistakes. There's some life lessons with Legend, although really I shouldn't be a role model for you. I'm what you might call a lost cause. Another good thing about these guys is that they don't have to pay money to colonize things, which means bringing a big army to colonize um, settlements is not required. Now, because these guys have actually quite high upkeep, I don't know if I really want to keep him here. His wife is a bitch. Alright, well, you're old, aren't you? How old are you? 69. 
And anyone who goes Hernet69, just just knows that I don't sit there going, oh, you, you know, ban those comments. But I just think to myself, virgin. So you don't owe my respect when you go, Hernet69. Could you be any lamer? Um, yeah. So I've got some money coming in. What's, yeah. Upgrade that. Doesn't cause squalor, so sure. This, the thing is, it's so gray that I think it's actually grayed out half the time, but it's actually not. Um, that provides the most food. Wait, that's only f that's fertility, which there is. Some. There's not much. I mean, I could increase the fertility, but it, I don't think it's essential just yet. Um, there's gems here. F money or food? We'll go with money, because money makes the world go dr uh, go down, you stupid clown. Um, we need money to uh, to build our armies up. And we do get bonuses from, from farms, so let's, let's fucking make use of it. Another thing I could probably do is raise a navy and go and explore the world. Alright, um, I don't actually have any money this turn, so we'll do it on another turn. Let me see if I can establish a few more trade agreements. Greetings! Mm, Speak nope. plain and we Well met, friend. Say no. Alright, that's fine. Moving on. So we're just sitting here in a nice quiet part of the world. Sort of. Just doing our own thing. In fact, this army's probably better off sitting here, because I don't think that's under much threat. There's some horde factions up this way. Yeah, this settlement... See, I can actually pronounce that. But in the spirit of having fun, let's rename it to something Australian-like. Um, hmm, I don't know, just think, like, Grogville, oh, I know, Foster's, Foster's beer, there you go, everyone's always going on about how we Australians drink Foster's, even though we don't, for the most part. Meeting halls what I need, but I don't have any. Uh, not, don't have any money, but I don't have enough money for it. I'll have enough next turn. So let's see how much money are we actually making because of that that farm there. So that's that. Which, which settlement? Wimbo Jumbo. Oh, well, that's a bit deceptive. The extra farming bonus is only applied to the fertility bonus, not the actual base husbandry bonus. But the thing is, the fertility bonus on them is still still higher than the other ones. Yeah, so maybe that would give us even more incentive to, to actually Im improve fertility then. But still, we need more growth if we're going to do that shit. Um, should I go and explore the world? Nah. Let's just remain insulated. Just remain completely insular here and just fuck the rest of the world for now. I'm not going to go meet the Western Romans or anything like that right now. So, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Let's move on to the next turn. So, again, like I said, this isn't going to be, like, the most skillful campaign you've ever seen. Because, for one thing, I'm going in this pretty much blind. I've spent five or ten minutes looking at each faction before deciding, yeah, I'm going to go with Venetians because they don't piss me off as much as the other two. Actually, no, to be honest, the Sclavenians didn't exactly piss me off, but I was just like, no, look, 
I always feel like this this pressure on me. Like if I ever play a campaign on very hard instead of legendary, I feel like, oh, what's this? Legends not playing on legendary difficulty. Oh, what a what a wanker! And then everyone just unsubscribes. I get I get that pressure on me sometimes. That's what it feels like. And sometimes I feel like if I don't declare war and everyone's trying to wake up, it's like, oh, what the hell's this? This isn't a proper legend campaign. Oh, fuck you. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. What? I wasn't even paying attention. Um, Allens. Yeah, whatever. Rearrange the words of Allens and you get anals. That's a bit of immature humor for you, all you 69er losers out there. Warriors. I could recruit some more troops, but I could beat that with what we've got here. Now, if we were thinking auto resolve only army, disbanding the Slavic Raiders would provide us with 620 extra income per turn. But then again, if we're fighting a battle manually, I would really want those cavalry. And that being said, how good are these cavalry? These guys are raiders, which I personally don't care about raiders. They're also skirmisher cav. I fucking hate skirmisher cav. I hate them. I hate using them and I hate going up against them. I just find them to be not worth it. You gotta have cavalry. There's cheaper cavalry amongst the mercenaries here that I would probably enjoy using a lot more. If you look at these guys' melee attack, it's very low. Their charge bonus is low. Melee defense is fairly low. Armor is low. Health is low for cavalry. Ammunition. I don't give a shit because they're skirmisher cav. Could be horse archers or nothing, bitch. Um, I'm sure everyone is going to want to have a look at what these guys can do, but let's just face it. They're fucking skirmisher cavalry. All they're going to be good at is fucking throwing javelins. And if you care about, oh, I want to see what the graphics is like, then you're on the wrong fucking channel because I've got everything on. Here, have a look at my graphic settings. Every like, every, just about everything is on max performance because don't care, don't care, don't give a fuck, don't care, don't. Oh, I do care about that. Um, yeah, that's all right. Don't care about this. That's alright. Don't give a shit. Don't give a shit. Fuck trees. I'd turn them off if I could. Um, terrain, don't care. This is the stuff I actually care about. Unit quality. Oh, then again, that's the stuff you'd want to look at, wouldn't it? Uh, no, I don't, didn't make any changes. Okay. And then, of course, some, some dipshit's gonna go, Oh, Legend, you should upgrade your graphics. Uh, actually, no, what I actually really need to do is upgrade my operating system because I'm on Vista, which is, I know I really need to upgrade it. Which I will. It, it's going to happen before Warhammer. I'm going to upgrade it. The problem is that I haven't left the house in like three weeks. <laughs> Except to like go and get a pizza or a movie. I do like a pizza. Um, let's just move on to the next turn. This governor here, he's... I guess eventually I will want to recruit agents. Um, so just pop that in there for when that happens. That's not too bad. Extra melee attack. It won't help uh, this. Cause... Yeah, whatever. Should I hire more units? I mean, they're not that expensive. Whatever, just move on. So playing a bit of a, a totaling campaign at the moment, because that's what I think benefits us the most. There is just no advantage at all in, in taking new territories, because the thing is most of our money is actually coming from our, our king's purse, we're not actually making that money, much money from tax. And if we go and attack someone, we're going to have to go for the whole province. And anyway, it's better to wait, because that way they'll build it up. They'll build it up all nice and everything, and even if they build something that's crap, we can just destroy it and make a lot of money. But if you go in there on turn one, like, not only do we have to build it up, which costs us money, but public order will be shit as well. So we'll just buy our time and we'll just see how we go. Buy our time, I mean. 
See, look how expensive it is just to fix this goddamn region up. Cost 15 food. Um, I don't want to consume too much food. See, what we really need now is growth. What's that going to provide? Public order. Well, that would come in handy. How's that public order at the moment anyway? It's shockingly bad. Um, not like I can do anything about it. I mean, I could lower the taxes, but even even then it won't solve anything. And if I lower the taxes too much, I just won't make any money. How are we going with trade? Yeah. I mean, I could I could make some gems. Okay, now gems, how much are they worth? Uh, where are the gems? Gems, gems, gems. There they are. They're worth 21 each. So if I build the gem thing, it'll make me... 21 times 20, that's 420 um, extra income. And that's if I was to sell them all off, which I probably would. 420 for a building, I, it's okay, I guess. But then again, it would also increase our, our the rate at which the long-term partnership increases. But I probably wouldn't focus on that right now. Probably what would be better is sanitation because I'm restricted in what I can build here because I really do not want sanitation issues. I've learned in the past that sanitation issues, whilst it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, it fucking starts piling up on you. Because a diseased region can spread disease to a healthy region quite easily, even if it's got sanitation. So you really want to get rid of that shit. And also, once you've got disease, it tends not to go away until you've um, actually built up sanitation. So it stays for a long time. If if you don't, if you don't, you know, have basic hygiene. I mean, even I've got basic hygiene. I've said a number of times about how how filthy I can be. But when I say I'm filthy, I just mean by today's germophobic standards. Like when I say I don't go and wash my hands before I go and eat something. It's not like I'm a fucking laborer while I'm, while I'm working in the sewer. I'm just at the computer most of the time. I mean, I, I, might, I might have sneezed on my hands. Fucking hell, all I'm doing is ingesting the, the germs that are were already in my body. And I never get sick anyway, so... Whatever. That's, that's like the worst thing I do. It's like, just not wash my hands very often. Because, I just know, this fucking germophobic culture is not necessarily good for you. There's a pussification of, the, of our of the kids that happens today. Like, oh, they gotta be bubble wrapped before they can go outside. Oh, you gotta wash your hands before you eat. You gotta make sure you detail the whole fucking kid before he, before he puts on his clothes. Make sure it's all steam dried and everything like that. Make sure he doesn't touch a germ in his life because it might make him sick. You know what to make him sick? Not having a fucking immune system. And do you know you get an immune system? By essentially exercising it. I mean, that's what vaccines are. They're like dead versions of viruses, so that they're basically it's like a it's like a training drill for the um, immune uh, for the um, immune system. Same works with germs. Give you give your fucking immune system a, a a drill every now and again. Eat a piece of shit off the ground. That'll wake it up. You might get sick, but you. Um, by piece of shit, I don't literally mean a piece of shit. Like don't literally pick up a horse shit and eat it. Why am I even talking about this? Oh, because I'm going on about sanitation. I just go off on a tangent because nothing else to do. Uh, I'm just burning through turns. We've got public order issues that are really bad. I'm trying to solve it, but can't. I can only build so much. I mean, I've got the money. I just can. Yeah, I can only build so much. We need. The thing is, though, this guy's stifling our growth. Rating does that. Can't you just fuck off somewhere else, bitch? The thing is, the Roxolanians. They are. They hate, they don't like us. Well, I really don't know what else to do about it. I mean, if a revolt happens, it's not the end of the world. I'll just send my forces uh, down to go and go and beat them. But it is a pain in the ass. Actually, we got we got so much money as can certainly afford to to increase Slavic. Ra no, no, no. I don't even like Slavic Raiders. Why do I even? I, don't, I really feel like I want to disband them because I just, like I like cavalry. Don't get me wrong, but useless cavalry like this, where I wouldn't even raid, use them to raid settlements. Well, then again, 
It can be useful. I don't know. Whatever. Let's move on. Yes, it's always good to take life advice from legend. Because, um, on occasion I've actually... Just to give you an idea of how fucking superhuman I am, I have, um... In the, uh, I don't do it regularly, but I donate blood sometimes. Oh yeah, that's right, I can actually be charitable for sometimes, believe it or not. Um, it's only because they fucking keep calling me up and pressuring me because when I was in high school I donated blood and they... They discovered that not only do I have a super high plasma count, but I also have a super high plus, um, platelet count. So they're like, they're like fucking vampires for my blood, like, give us your blood, we need it. And people ask me, well, how, how come, like, I remember when I was on the machine and donating platelets, which takes for fucking ever. Uh, the guy walked past and was like, whoa, what the fuck, how come you got that many platelets? And I'm like, because I'm legend, bitch. Because I eat shit off the ground. When I drop food on the ground, I just pick it up and eat it. My wife's like, don't fucking eat that. You just dropped it on the ground. And it's like, it makes me stronger. Bitch. I don't actually say bitch in front of her face, though. And she's not a bitch. But yeah. She, she's not like me. She's not, she's not like, she's not a grot. Very few women are complete grots like me. And if they were, I don't think it's very attractive. <laughs> Funny that. Um, what am I going to do here? Will I build this? Yeah. But what am I going to build here? Sanitation? I could build the gems, but I think we can hold off on that because we definitely do need sanitation. There's... Wealth from all buildings. Oh, hang on, what is this? Just cause of squalor. Wealth, 15% from all buildings, all regions in adjacent provinces. That's... Pretty good, I guess, but the thing is, is that this is not enough building slots, and there's just other things I need a bit more crucially, like a well. Because if we build that, then we can... That doesn't even provide enough sanitation to fix this. But then again, we should be able to get to level 2. That takes 5 turns to get there. This will take 4, so deal with that soon. That provides us with a bit more food, which will provide us with a bit more growth. That also provides growth. And we certainly need that. I don't know if I need to build a food building here. No, no, of course, that'll have to be gems. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna waste that. Alright, um, what else could I possibly do? I could build trade, no. No. I don't want any squalor problems. Where'd they go? Down here. They might declare war and attack it, but even if they did, I, I can't get there in time. Who knows, they might not. I'm not really fast. Anyway, I reckon people would enjoy me losing a campaign. But then again, I reckon they'd be like, Oh, legend suck shit, you suck. There's one thing I can't fucking stand is people rubbing anything in my face. Like, if they win on a one versus one battle, like, I, I do try not to be a total dick. Unless, of course, I know the person. Like, taking the example of Matt Blueshift, who I've known for a long, or quite a long time, and we've had our ups and downs. We can talk shit to each other because we know each other, but some random I don't know, that hasn't bought any, built any rapport with me, um, starts talking shit, I get, I start losing my shit. It's just like, who the fuck do you think you are? Fuck off. But at the same time, I'm trying not to do it to other people. Because there's that, that age-old saying, you know, do unto others as they would do unto you or whatever. Or the other way around. Or is that always as, as you would have them do unto you? You know, treat others as you would want to be treated. Which I do, basically. I know... I don't care if people talk to me in, like, a foul manner. Just fucking leave me alone. Alright, um, so that's been built. Um, yeah, build that. Uh, train, uh, research that. This rebellion seems pretty much inevitable. Because that's not going to help. Hmm. That's only one squalor. 
just thinking. Do I even need to build this here? Maybe I should have built it there because that gets an extra build slot. Oh no, it'd be fine. Oh, no. It's all good. Uh, I'll, I'll customize later. We've only got so many build slots. I just need to make do with what I've got. And I, I do need extra sanitation so I can... Yeah, I can build that now. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're uh, low on food. Alright, well, start building this. Oh, because these guys. Alright, moving on. I'm a little bit concerned about, um, I guess, you know, stifling my economy. Sometimes you can build things too much and completely fuck yourself. And then we've only got the one province, so we need to take care of it. I was testing this faction before an event happened with the Huns, which I don't think has happened this time. Like, forced me to pay some sort of tax. I don't know. Good, fuck off, and don't come home. Uh, come back, cunts. Go and die off in some distant land, you piece of shit, Roxolanian fuck. Alright, um... Okay, we definitely need to build that up, but we've got tons of money. This is helping with growth. Ah, uh, this is a problem. We need to research that. Well, that's eight turns away, I guess it's not too bad. If there's any more food, I'm, I'm, I've run out. Well, then again, this is coming. This will provide 50 from fishing. Public order's getting a, a bit better. That'll take five turns to build, which the food from that will be able to supply it. Okay. So yeah, no battles so far, but I kind of wasn't expecting it. Hopefully my commentary, my silly, silly com commentary, can sustain your interest in this episode. And if it doesn't, well then, like I always say, go suck a big black dick. And I say big black dick because statistically, black dicks are bigger. And if everyone goes, that's racist, I'm just like, it's a good kind of racist. It's like a comp it's like a racial compliment. I love stereotypes. I think they're hilarious. Ready for orders. Some extra cunning to reduce upkeep costs of this army, yeah. And once again, I don't see anything we need to do because we're just sort of turtling. Because, like I said, there's no point taking any territory. So let me just go to the pl diplomacy. I mean, I hate diplomacy most of the time. I hate. I don't want to check this come, every single come. turn. Let me hear your talk. Nobody else likes us. Flapping tongue that speaks without wisdom. So we're importing furs. Okay. I reckon trade resources should actually be consumable by a population and provide benefits. That would put an, a hell of a lot more depth into, into the game. Like, what Creative Assembly really needs to do in the next Total War? 
Not Warhammer, because obviously Warhammer's pretty much finished. They're just, like, beta testing it or whatever. But what they need to do is take the best of all the Total War games, strip out all the crap, and also have a look at two other series, Paradox Games and Civilization Games, and have a look at what they do with some of their stuff, and if they could manage to balance all three of those fucking genius elements together, they will have the best of everything. But of course, they don't know how to do it. I don't think. It, no, it might not be a case if they don't know how to do it. They don't want to do that, I would say. Because I think that's what people really want. Like, just the ultimate grand strategy game. That's what I want. And at the moment, that's, you know, Paradox in a way kind of wins in that degree because it is grand strategy. This has by far the best tactical stuff because Civilization and Paradox don't even bother with that kind of shit. But if, if Creative Assembly would just add a bit more grand strategy to, to these games, they would they would have they would have finally achieved what I would say the best total war. But they don't do it. I was there and I did suggest, you know, these things to try and make things a bit more grand. But I, I, I do think it feels like, to them, um, should we bother doing this? Is this going to make more sales? It's hard to, for me to say, oh well, yeah, it is going to make you more sales. Because for one thing, you're not going to get fucking mixed reviews like you do on Attila. Um, and personally, my business thoughts on it, if you've got a fantastic base game, you could get away with more DLCs because people would be more willing to buy it because the base game is more fun and more has more replayability value. I mean, look at Civilization V and Paradox games, fucking riddled with bloody DLC. Um, for the most part, they are criticised for it, but they still get away with it because the great the the, gan, uh, the grand campaign is so good. Whereas, like to be like, I don't want to diss out the DLC that's just come out, but like faction unlocked DLCs for Total War Attila are. I would call overpriced bags of meh. Like, they're well made, but it doesn't... Like, it just... It's like sprinkling sugar on a pile of shit. It's just it's not going to make it taste any better. Faction unlocked DLCs in the first place, they've got to come up with a better idea for DLCs for themselves. Like, campaign packs, like The Last Room and Age of Charlemagne, fantastic. I love both of those campaigns in comparison with, you know, the base game. Um, I think they're they're well worth the money to pay to, to, to play those, uh, to buy those DLCs. I full heartedly support those. Faction unlocked DLCs, I just get bleh. Blood and Gorb DLCs, I just think, what a rip-off. I'll still buy them. You know, I did buy the Blood, Blood and Gold DLCs because I want to support Creative Assembly and, you know, if this is a way for them to make more money so they can actually make a better game, that's great. You know, I fully support that. But at the same time, some of these DLCs are bullshit. Because it all comes down to cost versus value. I mean, that's, that's the thing with anything. And are we getting... Are we getting a good amount of enjoyment for the amount of money we're playing? And sometimes I feel like with these... these Faction unlocked DLCs. I just don't really get it. Like, if you saw on the on the when we first started, you could see that there was a DLC I was missing. I haven't I haven't got the Langobards DLC. Now, don't forget. Um, a few weeks back, we did a on uh, did online battles with everyone, and I was given a whole heap of DLC codes from Creative Assembly. I could have taken one of those for myself for the Langobard, uh, the Longbeard faction, but I didn't. Why? I don't give a shit about the long, uh, the Longbeards. Don't care. They're just, you know, just carbon copies of the Franks or whatever. They might have a couple of uh, different units, but for the most part, meh. I don't know, the Slavs have some interesting things, but I, I way prefer campaign packs. And I think they can be a little bit more creative with their DLCs as well. I know, like, to be honest, I like historical battles. I mean, that was a good thing about the uh, the last Roman campaign. They did come with a historical battle. Um, I kind of wish that Age of Charlemagne did as well, but they didn't. I don't really care 
care too much. I think the Age of Charlemagne campaign is actually more interesting than the um, last Roman campaign, just marginally. Okay, so no downsides. Um, to get dikes. I don't think I really need it right now, though. Sanitation here is certainly stable. But then again, it does provide more, more growth, and that's what we need a lot of. What happened here? Some desolate area. We could go and take that. Just send a general down there to go and take it, but I don't know if it's a good idea, that's all. Oh, no. Um, over here. There's only one desolate region. Now, the thing is, if we go down here just to take one region, I guarantee you, revolts, revolts, revolts. We'll, we, you won't be able to deal with it. Because you've got to understand, the, at this stage, the only thing I can do to counter uh, revolts or public order is with buildings. And in that region there, we'd have all the public order penalties that we have here with none of the benefits. We'd just just be public order death. And because there's no population um, in this game, which for fuck's sake, if anyone from Creative Assembly is watching, fucking put population back in, okay? Because it'll make your games a hell of a lot better because... If we had actually population back into the game, you could have population-based squalor and public order problems. So that a new region like this wouldn't necessarily have any squalor, but this one who, you know, there could be, you know, 100,000 people here. You know, that would actually cause the squalor problems. That's what made Medieval 2 and Rome 1 so much more dynamic. And the thing is, like, Empire Total War, whilst it did have population, the population was so fucking flaccid, it, was, it might as well have not been there. Like have the population in there, but actually use it if you're gonna if you're gonna put them in there. I mean, it's just like what I said before. Take the best of of the previous Total Wars, and one of the things that makes Rome One and Medieval Two so brilliant is the way the population mechanics work, which they really they they aced it in this game in in those games. Um, I don't know if I should buy that, but then again, I don't really have anything else to build. Okay, um, I could afford more troops. I'm still just trying to fix the public order. What do I need for this? Right. Well, I need that first, because I need food, because we're... Oh, actually, I've got quite a bit of food now. Where'd it come from? Oh, because of this, right. But then that's going to consume some food. It's also going to give us a bit more growth. Ah, oh, fuck it. We've got the money for us, no downside. Just go for it. This is the governor, he needs authority. And when I renamed these settlements, I, I said Australian names, but really, is these these Woolagoogoos and, and names like that, they're more Aboriginal. Like, Australian is just English with a mix of Aboriginal in there. Like, I'd be called a racist about this kind of stuff, but I'm not a racist, but I'm not really fond of Aboriginal culture. Nothing against the Aborigines themselves, but like, you, you go, look at the didgeridoo, and I go, ah, fuck it, I'm white, I like the electric guitar, fuck off. In case you don't know what the didgeridoo is, is that it's a fucking long stick that you blow into. Hollow stick. Um, no, don't. Oh yeah, what about promotions? I keep forgetting about this stuff because it's not important. Um, who's the governor here? Oh yeah. This is. It doesn't matter. Oh, extra wealth from agricultural buildings. Yeah, why not put them in there? I could say that I'm, I'm being a bit meh on this campaign, but I, at the same time, it's just like, I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, the, like I'm sure that I'll get a comment like, you forgot for like half the fucking video, the, the, uh, all the officers there, you missed out on so many bonuses and blah, 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 blah. And all I can say to that is, suck a big white dick. So I'm just like, 
I said white dick this time. I've got to keep it balanced because racism is about treating races differently, not about being mean. Next I'll say it's like a big Asian dick, which stereotypically would be hard to find. Now that's racist. But it's so minor racist. It's, it's not even racist to say, you know, that's just a stereotype. I had Asian friends growing up. I didn't have any Aboriginal friends because there were no Aboriginal guys in school. I think there was one, but he was the biggest dropkick. Like, just the biggest dumbass ever. Like, not to, not to, uh, you know, not because he was Aboriginal or anything, but, okay, to give you guys an example, right? Okay, in, in Australia and Queensland, where I'm from, you, at, at the end of grade 12, which is the final year of school, you're ranked on... You know, how well you did. Our school was just the dumbest of the dumb fuck. We were the, like the dumbest school ever. Okay. And it's called OP, which is overall position. That's your ranking, right? One being the best, 25 being the worst. We had like seven people that had OP 25, and he was one of them. Now, I'm not saying I did particularly well. Okay, I got an OP 14, which was bang on about... Which was actually above average for my school, because the thing is it works on a bell curve. Like, if your whole school is dumb, everyone gets ranked down. So, I, I, I wouldn't say I was really that schooly, but I was, I was above average in my school. Which is not really saying much. It got me into university, at least. A little good that did me. Um... So I ended up with a lot of crippling debt and was just like, oh, fuck this, I'm just going to live off YouTube. Or not live off YouTube, try and work off YouTube. Because I tell you what, working out in the industry, man, bosses are assholes. They're like, well, we could pay you or we could just hire a student and they'll do it for free. It's like, don't fucking threaten me, cunt. Fire me or don't. But I'm not fucking working for free. And you, you will get that. Like, my wife got that from, from a uh, potential employer the other day as well, where they will threaten not to hire you because they can hire someone cheaper. It's like, it's such a dick move, and it happens in the industry all the time. It's so much better being your own boss, even if you don't make as much money. And just remember, kids, never fucking listen to the boss if he sounds like a dick. Well, I, shouldn't, I should rephrase that. Don't do don't be willing to do anything that your boss says. You've got to be willing to stand up for yourself. Because if you don't, they will shit all over you. If they, if they realize that you're a carpet, they will walk all over you and go, this is my bitch. As soon as you're out of the room, they go, this is my bitch. I'm going to fucking walk all over this cunt because he takes it like a bitch right up the backside. Don't let them do that to you. Because they will do it to you. And I found that what university, uh, I guess, geared me for was not necessarily learning life skills. It was more about learning how to fit into the industry. I was like, well, you have to be willing to undercut yourself. No thanks. Yeah, mate, can you do a week of work for free? Uh, how about you suck my cock instead? So at the end of the day, we all need money to live off. Got to, got to pay the bills at the end of the day. We can't just live with our parents forever. And I, trust me, I did my parents a favor by moving out because they were sick of me. And even when I told my parents, I said, oh yeah, I'm thinking about moving out. They said, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Because <laughs> you're annoying, you shit. Why are you sick of this kid? He's... Fucking on the computer till 3 o'clock in the morning, then he gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning and goes on the computer. Then he 
gets when he gets off the computer all he does is annoy his brothers that was me I was because I was the oldest I was I was the troublemaker actually to be honest we were all kind of troublemakers Do. I got tons of money, but what am I going to build? I'm sure some of you are going, fucking enough with the life story that Janemi gives a shit. How about you get on to with some wars? And all I can say to that is, I don't know, go suck a fucking Indian dick. Big Indian dick. Oh fuck, we're on nearly an hour here. Alright, well, I already said there wasn't going to be a, well, probably wasn't going to be a battle on this episode, so I think it'll end it here, and hopefully what you guys are enjoying is my, my, I wouldn't call them, they're not rants, they're just, just, we're just having a conversation here, while well, I'm talking to myself, because you guys can't talk back to me, so, I, you know, if you're asking questions, I can't hear you, obviously, but yeah, just talking shit, and if you can't talk shit, then what else is there? Anyway guys, yeah, so that's the end of this episode, so like and subscribe, part 2's next, and don't forget to visit me on Facebook, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.